This is a story of boy meets girl, but you should know up front, this is not a love story. What's going on, guys? It's BX Beast Boy, but you probably already know that because you came on my, my channel. Anyway, I digress. I want to talk about somebody by the name of Amanda Sills. Let me try to make sure this mic is good. And just as a disclaimer, my neighbors be wilding. So if you hear some background noise, what you want me to do? What you want me to do, man? That's how it is. Anyway, <laughs> talk about Amanda Sills, right? If you don't know who that is, she's like a comedian, super like pro-black, was on that TV show, The Real. You know, something's bad when you too horrible to be on The Real. Right. When, when the real is like too much, that, that should be a sure sign <laughs> that you need to 86 it. In my opinion, in my opinion, but yeah, she's like super pro black woke. Right. And she's gone through a bunch of stuff and recently start crying about how her career is like over and she's not making money. Yo, fault. Yo, fault. who else fault is that? Straight crazy. I used to be a fan of her. I know it sounds wild, right? Like nothing she makes would even appeal to me. Wrong, actually. When she was a kid, she was on a TV show called My Brother and Me, right? They had Alfie, uh, who's other dude, my man Goo. There's it a whole bunch of people, but she was a main character on that TV show on Nickelodeon, right? How did she turn into like Princess Wokus? I don't know. It's just something that happened over time, I'm assuming. Right. So that it just happened. Maybe it was part of a trend or she thought that she was going to be able to earn more income. Right. One of these things. Excuse my squeaky chair, too. If you hear that over the mic, squeaky chair sounding, sounding like I'm a robot and whatnot. Anyway, I digress, man. Amanda Sills, she faced a lot of issues that led to this downfall. Right. She engaged in the Jussie Smollett conversation, but she fumbled that. Right. How are you trying to be in media? Right. And all you got to do is just be honest. Now you're on in media. The facts is right there. This is a topic that the information is out, especially at the time when she dropped this horrible, horrible statement. All you had to do is say he tripping and shut up. That that's it. It's a, oh, he lied. Jesse Smelly. He lied about being attacked and all this other stuff. Shame on him. Next topic. No, she stands up for him says that it's low-key noble what what he did word son if he really did do this to manifest it for attention then it is a heinous thing to do and he has to pay the price but he is he is never and if he didn't and if he didn't he hasn't admitted to that right and if he didn't then he is owed an apology because he's getting yeah. dragged through this but and my that thing is, is why, they, why aren't they um why aren't they bringing charges against the the two brothers well, I think the Why aren't they bringing charges against all the white people that call the cops for BS every single day? <laughs> and then there's that too. The whole issue. Every yeah. single day. And even if it was a hoax for the sake of bringing attention to this, then I'm like, that's low-key noble. For real? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Nah. I've arrived because my, my contract is up at the real and I did not renew it. Because it doesn't feel good to my soul to be at a place where I cannot speak to my people the way they need to be spoken to and where the people who are speaking to me in disparaging ways are not being handled. Mm -hmm. I'm not in a space where I can, as a full black woman, have my voice and my coworkers also have their voices and where the people at the top are not respecting the necessity for black voices to be at the top too. Nah, that's, that's a little, come on, man. That's crazy. The real, they're known for being extremely woke and kicking off anyone who's not woke, right? That was a little too far. That was, you said he was noble for doing it, for lying and wasting like the city's dollars on his like manhunt trying to find these people who said it's MAGA country. Like all of that, for, for real, there's nothing noble about that, ma'am. Not a single thing, right? Not a single thing. And then they decided to kick her off and she ranted about that. She was really upset, right? Burned that bridge. But she ended up getting on a, another TV show, right? I think it was with Issa Rae, some chick that she was a YouTuber. That's how I know of her, right? Original creator and then crossed over into mainstream. She got onto that show and 
she couldn't just be happy because that's like super pro black, right? Issa Rae, uh, Insecure, I think is the name of the show, super pro black. She couldn't be happy with that, right? Oh, you here with your people. Nah, they throw like a all black party or something, something of that nature to celebrate BLM or black, black, blackness, blackity black, pro black, pro black. And she has a lot of beef with people behind the scenes. And some of these people happen to be white. These people were the ones running the party. These are people in charge of the party. She tries to get in, even though it was clear as day, all the stuff that she talks about, the people behind the scenes that she was not invited. What she do? Try to get in anyway. That's, that's what Amanda Seals do. And when she couldn't get in, she starts recording it and blaming it on her race. So a year ago, um, Issa Rae's publicist, Vanessa Anderson of AMPR and some other people, they started doing a black Emmy party. So it's basically like to celebrate like black Hollywood. Of course, I work with Issa. So Vanessa is somebody who I have absolutely like met before, like when I have my web series on Issa's channel on YouTube and I have interacted with her Um you know on a few occasions but she has never been nice to me ever like she's always had a certain like curtness and she's always seemed to be bothered but simply by just like my demeanor my way of inner my way of communicating with her etc and at a certain point it just became well then this is just not somebody i need to speak to because i don't work for her and she doesn't work for me and you know there's no reason for us to even interact for all intents and purposes Heard. I am being denied entrance to the Black People's Emmy party. And it's a white woman telling me I can't go in. Just, I just want to put this on record that I'm literally being told you cannot get entered, entrance into a party that Jesse Williams invited me to, that is the only Black event for the Emmy weekend. Because a white woman is telling me I can't get in. You should be ashamed of yourself. You should be straight ashamed of yourself. That's like the cycle of Amanda Seals. But this wasn't even the worst thing that she done. Nah. She goes on like, not a podcast, but a radio show with Charlemagne and I think DJ Envy, who we, we should probably cover as a topic eventually. <laughs> One of my channels. Nasty. Straight nasty. So she goes on this show and she tells how she had like this dream of dating this football player, this specific football player and eventually she got famous and he reached out to her but he didn't want to like build a relationship and get married he wanted to hook up and he was direct and she didn't want to so she said no in the normal world this is called a normal conversation or just in the dating world this is a normal interaction you say what you want i say what i want we move on not the more than less. No, she goes and she makes a spectacle out of it, talks about it on her podcast, which I, I, I would never want to listen to. And then she talks about it in this radio show, leading some other woman to send false allegations, or at least allegations that we have no evidence or proof of, of how this man is so horrible and nasty. And they flood her inbox. Remember, he's famous. This could be a bunch of scorned exes. Or we don't know, right? We don't know. The one person that I actually got excited about, like who had dropped in my DMs, I basically like manifested two years ago. I was like, this person is going to eventually fall into my DMs. Mm -hmm. And if, like he did, we had a conversation and um, I talk about this on my podcast, Small Doses. Like within the first conversation, he's like, when are you coming to Boston? I was like, well, I'll be there February 23rd. Well, we know he's in Boston For now. my okay. show. Right. We know he's in Boston. And he was like, nice clue. no, I need to see you before that. Mm. Easy B. Like, oh, oh, oh. Easy B. Really don't take it lightly what I'm about to say. Um because when you when you name names, you know, you put not only that person out there, but you also put yourself out there. But I I feel as a woman who makes it my business to be a warrior for the truth, that it needs to be said. I, on my podcast um, and on The Breakfast Club, spoke about an individual who had approached me on the internet and who we spoke on the phone and uh, that they said some troubling things in the conversation that made me take a step back. And that also, uh, with literally like no investigation, it was brought to my attention that he had sexually harassed a woman by opening the door when she came to meet him for a date, but naked. 
and then telling her that she was the one who was overreacting, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I heard that one story and was just like, whoa, that's crazy. When I spoke about him on my podcast and on my and on the uh, Breakfast Club, I didn't say his name. I literally just said a couple like characteristics about him. And it has been shocking and incredibly discomforting to me how many women eight as of tonight that have come forward to say his name. They knew exactly who he was to say his name and that he had been incredibly problematic and, um, you know, behaved in a very sexual predatorial way with them that some have said could have gotten him fired. So I say all that to say, if you are approached by Myron Roll, you should just be mindful. I don't have empirical proof, but I've had enough women come forward saying that he was incredibly inappropriate with them that I feel it would be inappropriate of me to not put the word out there that there is a man that is not being okay. So she takes this non-information, goes on her Instagram and starts blasting him. This is during like the Me Too ever. She goes heavy with it, starts getting, oh yeah, I'm just going to warn all women. I just want to let you guys know not to mess with him. If he ever didn't, you tell. That's crazy. She was famous too at the time. Guys. So she just let millions of women just be like, hey, this guy's this. He's horrible. He's a nasty person. These are allegations that are out on him. Don't mess with him. Yo, are you sick? Remember, there's no proof, no evidence. None. This is, that's nasty. That is nasty. What makes it even worse is once a lot of fans and people in the audience start realizing, hey, there's no kind of evidence. This is just, in fact, what you're detailing wasn't even bad. You, he said that he wanted to hook up. You said no. He moved on. You moved on. Why are you going on this campaign to destroy this man? She responds. She responds in the most fraud way possible saying, oh, well, I never said he did anything. Some things to address. One. I never accused my role of sexually harassing me or of sending me inappropriate DMs. What I did say was that via DM, several women have approached me accusing him of sexually harassing them. Second, I never said that black men were the cause for Jesse Smollett. And I also have never said that black men are solely the cause for holding black people back. You just told a bunch of women not to mess with them, implying, implying that this man is like some type of terrifying like creature that you, sh you should run from. But now when you you're expected to stand on your own words, but trying to cancel this man, it's just, oh, well, I never said. Fam, we, we got songs for nasty people like you over here. We, we got a song, especially song I like to dedicate to people just like you. Cause that's, that's just foul. Yeah, yeah. Uh you nasty fam, you nasty. You nasty fam, you nasty. You nasty fam, you nasty. You nasty fam, yeah. You know your name. You nasty. This is what this woman does. This is what she does. It's part of like her branding, race baiting, and trying to cancel people. Once again, guys, this man has not been proven to have done anything but that's not all she does on social media she'll jump into other people's relationships and tell the woman to leave the guy that's just what she does cardi b situation right her husband they was going through something he apologized she's like oh that's toxic did he apologize leave him boy mine hit me today he was like i don't understand why people are saying that that offset coming on cardi's show and trying to do a grand gesture is toxic there's so much to unpack. In a nutshell, it's toxic because it is somebody who has created the negativity in the situation, trying to control the situation. He knew exactly what he needed to do to keep her in his life, and he did not do that. And now he's doing grand gestures, and it's not helpful because it doesn't correct the wrongdoings. Furthermore, 
it is him trying to control the narrative. But when he had the power to control the narrative with his own behaviors, he chose to be hurtful. It's no longer your narrative now. <laughs> That's what she said. That is, that is crazy. That's straight crazy. And that's one of many, one of the many cases that she does. Like, I think there was another one where there was this girl, not Chloe, the sister, I think it's Haley, right? Haley Bailey, I think that's her name. And she's dating this guy named DDG that he gets a lot of slack for not being good enough for her all over the internet on a constant basis, fam. She's one of the reasons why she comes out at DDG, who's a YouTuber turned rapper, who I think is doing really well for himself. They're dating rumors is that he got her pregnant. A lot of good stuff in the works, right? You never know. You never know. She jumps out because he defended her when people didn't like her being the little mermaid. I might disagree with what he's saying, but he defended his woman and she like, you defended her. How dare you? You need to break up with him. But what's wrong with you? Allie Bailey's boyfriend, DDG, says he wasn't aware of racism, was still an issue until the Little Mermaid backlash. I thought Martin Luther King canceled that shit out. Gotta break up with him. <laughs> Gotta do it. Why, who hurt you? For real? What, you used to be so happy on my brother and me on Nickelodeon. What happened? Straight crazy. Straight crazy. So after all of these things and the incidents where she pretty much blackballed herself, not the other way around, she did it to herself. She comes on, she starts crying about how she's not able to make money. And that she hopes that people start supporting her more than they already are. So she can make ends meet. You don't go get a job. I, I don't know what to tell you, fam. You know what I mean? So being my regular transparent self, I can feel people distancing themselves from me for my stance, professionally and personally. And um, I already got blacklisted this year um, from certain venues because I stood up for myself professionally when I was being uh, what's the word <laughs> scammed I genuinely am unsure what like is coming next um I think a lot of us feel that way. And it, that, and then you feel that way and then you're like, you're not being bombed. How dare you? Um, but uh, yeah, you know, you're just like, am I gonna have agents? <laughs> no, UPS, they, I think they hiring, right? Ain't they always ours? Get, get on it. And no shame, fast food. That's some um, Uber. I know you got a car. Ooh, you fancy, independent. You know, get your independent ass out there and make that money. Go, go do what you got to do. Do what you got to do. Stop begging. Man, it's a, this is crazy. You super like feminist woman that don't need a man for nothing. You want to try to destroy men's like careers in life. Now you demanding help. Should be ashamed of yourself. Overall, I think that Amanda Sales sealed her own fate. See what I did there? I'm surgical. I'm surgical in this piece, but she did it to herself and she has no one to blame but herself. Man. That she's nasty. She lived by the woke metaphorical sword and you know the rest. You know the rest. But tell me what your opinion is. Do you think that she's nasty? Even if you didn't know about her, do you think this was like a good breakdown? And, and do you think this chair too squeaky? I'm working on it. 
I'm working on. Let me know in the comment section. And if you want to support, actually, you can sign up for my memberships or you can sign up for my Patreon where you get exclusive access and early access to a bunch of videos and stuff like that. Go and check that out if you want to. You see, Amanda Seals, it's not, it's not like a demand, right? It's on, it's on them. They want bonus and great content for as low as $1. That's up to them. What's going on, guys? If you want to see me live stream, there's two options right now, currently, currently. But now I'm going to be streaming on Twitch. You can go and follow me on there. And I'm also going to be live streaming on Rumble. You can go over and follow me on there. If you want to get access to my live streams and be able to watch the playback, that is the best way. Twitch and Rumble. See you guys later.